architects can harness the power of design, visualization, and analysis tools with the Architecture, Engineering, and Construction Collection from Autodesk. Within the collection, architects use tools to seamlessly conceive, model, optimize, and coordinate their designs with AEC professionals across multiple disciplines and throughout the life cycle of a project. In the early stages of your design, you can use Autodesk Format Pro to create a conceptual massing study within the context of the site. Easy to learn sketching and drawing tools allow you to sketch and iterate on your ideas. And if you are looking for additional inspiration, you can even invite other architects in different locations to a design session in real time as you settle on an idea to further develop. Your conceptual designs translate into BIM data in later design stages. And once the initial idea has been conceived, it can be further modeled to a higher degree of detail in an intelligent 3D model with Revit. And since Revit leverages BIM to reduce errors and omissions, you can work in your preferred view, whether it's 2D or 3D. Any design change that you make will automatically update impacted parts of your model including schedules, sections, and elevations. And if you work with stakeholders who use AutoCAD, Revit can import and export DWG files. When you're exporting DWG, you have complete control over layers, line weights, and line types. With Recap Pro, we've simplified the process of reality capture so that anyone beginner or specialist can scan building sites faster and easier than ever before. Now you can scan quickly and accurately for surveying, planning, renovating, and constructing new buildings or infrastructure. As your Revit model progresses, you can optimize how it will ultimately perform once constructed with Autodesk Insight. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Thank you for uh, attending this webinar. Uh, my name is Momak El Bajuri. So I'm, uh, today uh, I will share about the digital project management by using Autodesk uh, BizWorks Manage. Okay. And before we go further into our topics today, uh, let me introduce you with our homepage website. So this is our website, acadsystems.com, with S, okay? And by visiting this web uh, homepage, you can find all the information needed, okay? We are the Autodesk School Partner, okay? We are organizing uh, workshops and webinars uh, for those who are interested in joining for any topics, okay? We are doing it uh, frequently nowadays due to the uh, MCO period Okay, and we have uh, plenty of webinars coming uh, into our list. Okay, and we uh, also have latest promotions and news for all our clients. If you are interested in the trading promotions, so we have the promotion until May to July. And if you require a training uh, for any of the software, you can always uh, contact us to find out more about the syllabus uh, and pricing. Okay, all right. Uh, we have uh, around 20 uh, participants today. Okay, uh, it's a good numbers and I hope you guys will enjoy the content that will be presented today. Okay, so uh, this is uh, Navisworks is actually a software, okay? It's a tool uh, for construction uh, process, especially for contractor, uh, for consultants. Uh, even if you are the client, uh, if you are the uh, share, uh, stakeholder, and if you are the one who designed uh, the buildings, 
apparently you need to know how you're going to uh, manage the models that you created. Okay, so this is the models that I uploaded into uh, Autodesk Navis Works. Okay, as if you are having the Autodesk AEC collections, so you are actually have this uh, Autodesk Navis Works to be used just for free. Okay, and if you don't have any is this uh, software, any kind of uh, AEC collections or whatever, so you can always subscribe one uh, to to get the experience of using uh, Navis Works. And today, uh, what I'm going to show you today is is how we're going to manage our construction process uh, by running the Clash Detective uh, module. Okay. We can run the uh, class detective models, okay, and we can work with uh, timeliner. So timeliner is equal to your work program. If you are working with your Microsoft Excel, uh, Prima, Vera, Microsoft Projects, uh, all the uh, work program related software, so we can actually do the same thing with Autodesk and Visual. And even better. You can link those uh, timelines or those work programs with 3D models. And that is where you can uh, run the simulation, uh, timeline simulations along with the 3D uh, viewing. So that's that's the thing that I want to show you guys today. And of course, there are more features with Navisworks. We have uh, quantification features to do costing. Okay, so this will not be touched today. Uh, I will run another series of webinar for Navisworks focus on the costing. And we can also do rendering. Okay, and of course. Uh, Navis Works can run the animations, so we can run uh, any um, any kind of animations like uh, fly through, walk through. Uh, you can uh, try to do uh, the uh, drop animations. Okay, uh, so any kind of animation along with the script. Okay, so Navis Works also supports the script. So that's basically the main features. Uh, that is supported by Navisworks or the things that you can do with uh, Autodesk Navisworks Manage. Okay, and as you all aware, they've also got Navisworks Manage, uh, got Navisworks Freedom, and also Navisworks Simulation. So those are actually the same. It's just that uh, Manage is the most comprehensive uh, products in, in Navisworks. So we have the full features here. So, and also Navisworks Manage is included in AC collection, which is uh, very useful for, for you to use. Okay, so this is the uh, sample model uh, that, that, that been created by using Revit. Okay, so this, uh, this is not just the architecture model. So if I'm going to show you what is what has been uploaded uh, in here, is actually, if you can find, uh, there is a selection tree, uh, so the selection tree is like uh, finding layers uh, in, in AutoCAD in any other software, okay? And But in Navisworks, we call it selection tree because we can select uh, anything, any element based on the item stated here. For instance, if you want to select uh, element based on level, so you can always find it here. If Let's say if you want to, to find element for level two, you can always uh, hide unselected Okay. And you can go through the models okay. in detail. You can zoom in. Okay. You can check all the, the details in this design if it's correct. And if you need any changes, there are ways to, to comment and do markups for this uh, Navisworks model. Okay. And again, we can always unhide everything back. And if let's say you want uh, for these models, I uploaded uh, three disciplines. Okay. Uh, the first one is the architecture model. Okay. The second one is the structure model. So let's see what it looks like with the structural model. Okay. So this is the coordinated structural models with the right uh, coordination point. So this should be started uh, since you model in uh, Revit, the same software. So if you are modeling in a different software, that would be that would cause a little bit problem, uh, but that can be solved. Doesn't matter. Okay, as long as you know how your project is coordinated, then that should not be an issue uh, for coordination in Navisworks. 
So you can still uh, pinpoint the, the position of any structural model or any m &E models uh, correctly, uh, as long as you know where is the points, okay? And let's say you want to see how it looks like with the MEP models, okay? MEP stands for mechanical, electrical, uh, and plumbing, okay? So this is the samples of the mechanicals, plumbing, and some of the electrical model. So it's quite complicated, and it is the the, the same as the components that will be constructed by the contractors. Okay, uh, so why we use Navisworks? First, because of the coordinations. So we need everything well coordinated before we start with any construction process on site. Okay, so that's that's the main purpose. And it's not just the way we coordinate. So, and when once we coordinated them in the right way, so we can run a clash detection. So this is the most popular features for Navisworks users. So clash detection, uh, what we can do with clash detection is that uh, with all the files uploaded uh, into Navisworks, you can actually uh, run the clash detection module. For instance, if you want to uh, run the uh, test for uh, architectural against the structure model okay so okay so you have to select uh, what what types of model or what okay what kind of models that you are going to run the clash against so for, uh, for selection a i'm choosing uh, architecture models and for selection b i'm choosing the structural uh, models so by selecting this means that if you upload, uh, if you uploaded 10 models, so let's say it can be 50 models, 100 models based on the uh, uh, disciplines that is, has been involved. If you break it down uh, in details for m &E, it could be uh, more, okay? And from that, we can get the right selection so that we can uh, set the tolerance and then we can set the clash setting type, which is hard. and if you are satisfied with the settings, you can simply run the test, okay? And you have to wait for a few seconds, okay? And then uh, it will bring you the results of the clash items uh, in Navisworks, okay? For instance, is if I want to look in detail for this clash number two to five, so you can see uh, the components, okay? So it shows here in what levels and in what grids that is that has been involved, uh, this is involved in this uh, clash detection, okay? Okay. And if you uh, uh, if you have done uh, running the clashes uh, analysis, so you can see all thousands of clashes created. So for this case, it can be two thousand eight hundred and ninety-two just for structures again architecture components, not yet involving the mechanical. Okay, and uh, I have done uh, a clash analysis between uh, architecture and MEP uh, mechanical model, so it has in total uh, one thousand and uh, sorry, in total it has the two thousand plus two thousand one hundred and four. Okay. And this is the status bar of the clash that you run, mean, uh, where you can see what, how many clashes that has been detected, okay? And how many clashes that is still new, uh, which is just newly detected, and how many clashes that actively uh, clashed in this, uh, if you rerun the clash again, okay? And by re resolving this clash, you can see how many issues that has been resolved here. It's all automatically uh, stated here. You don't need to edit anything. So uh, as long as you know the right way uh, to work with that, okay? And then by working with this, uh, for instance, you can see, you can, let's say I'm go back to the early uh, case. So for instance, if you are having this uh, kind of uh, 
clashes and you want to create or generate the report so you can always go to a report menu and you can choose what are the contents or what are the items that will be included in the report and then uh, for me I, I prefer to use the uh, promet uh, html tabular because it can also be open up in excel okay and it uh, gives you along with the pictures uh, that you saw before okay and once you're satisfied with the selection of the contents and uh, status involved you can always click right report okay and i will bring it uh, to a save folder so you can click save and give you a few seconds to run uh, or it won't take very long because this building is quite huge okay so if you are working with a smaller building it will be a lot faster so while waiting i will show you some uh, samples okay some samples on the uh, clash report uh, for architecture model against uh, mechanical models. So what you can see with the risk report, it first uh, stated the images, okay, and the clash number and all the information required. For instance, the item number one belongs to the selection number one, which is architecture, and item number two belongs to the second selection, which is uh, MEP models. So in these uh, columns, you can see there is the element ID, so this element ID is very important for uh, if you are working with Revit modeling. So you know that element ID is very important to trace which element is having issues. Okay, and by at tracing back uh, to this uh, by using element ID, you know that that particular models. Okay, let's say I'm working with. Uh, let me show you the. So for this particular uh, wall, it actually belongs to a specific ID. And let's say you are having issues with the models here, which is clash between walls and the mechanical component, mechanical ducting. And let's say you are resolving the issue by modifying the walls opening and you, you make a little bit void uh, cut in the wall models. So means that you are going to resolve the issues and so does the process in the construction. Okay, mean, in meaning that if you are repairing these models, so whatever details that's come up from this Revit drawing uh, for any construction details, uh, for any uh, typical detailing and whatever detail that is can be generated. So it will follow exactly the size of the opening or whatever details that you put here. So meaning that the constructor will read the latest drawing based on the updated uh, uh, model in Revit. Okay, by updating uh, these uh, models, if we jump back uh, to our uh, Nevis works, I will attend the questions uh, after this. Okay. So while waiting for the Navis works to finish exporting, uh, so in Revit, okay, it was not originally uh, have in this kind of opening. Okay. So this is me doing the the, the repairing. Okay. I, I'm creating a void so that uh, the walls to so in reality, it will not be that way. So if I'm editing this profile, so if I want to show you uh, how I'm editing the models in Revit, so I will just go with the, uh, sorry. Okay. Trace. Okay. Let me do this opening here and let's say you have this kind of opening here, some of them uh, with the uh, gap size. Okay. okay, this can be done better. Uh, if you know the, the actual constraint and the, if you know the actual gaps that is required 
for any kind of opening, okay, so that the items can pass through the wall uh, clearly, okay. And if you have finished, okay, and you know that you have solved the issues in the models, then how are we going to bring back the, the how are we going to solve the issues or how are we going to respond to the reports so that the Navy SOAP will know uh, this problem has been solved. So for any models that you edited, so whatever is, is not only remitted to Revit, so if you're working with any kind of modeling software like Inventor, SolidWorks, uh, or any other kind of modeling software, so you should know that Navy SOAP reads the exact same file from the beginning. So if you edit the same file, you should not replace them with the uh, new name. So that's not going to work. Okay. So what you can do is you just save the file and uh, we can do a kind of refreshing in uh, Navy Swords. Let me go back to the Navy Swords. Okay. And from here, you can see there is a refresh button up here. Okay. So by clicking the refresh button, Navy Swords will automatically read uh, the same file over again to make sure if there are any changes. And it gives you some kind of warning saying that there are clashes that has been resolved. So this is a sample of the resolved item uh, in the previous model set I show. So that five uh, issues that has been resolved means that the total clashes numbers is 2,104. And there are still uh, 2,099 uh, cases that has not been solved yet. So it means that the process is going to be run uh, this way until you solve all the issues. And it's going to be repeating all over again until uh, all disciplines are satisfied with this, okay? And uh, back to the results that we created. So let's see, we, we're going to find it in here. Okay, so this is uh, the same report with uh, different uh, disciplines. Okay, if you are going to down the report, meaning that you will see thousands of clashes. Uh, and with all the information stated here, it's going to help you to resolve the issue. So this is what it means by uh, clashes reports in detail. So even though some of the, uh, most of the Revit modelers uh, are comfortable with uh, clash or interference checking in Revit. So why don't you level up yourself with the new knowledge here? It's, it's, got, it's not gonna be very hard, but it's, it's gonna be um, a, a bit method uh, for you to understand how it works in Revit so, so that you can get a precise uh, result. Okay, so that is uh, how we're gonna run uh, clash detections in uh, Navis works. And next thing I want to show to you all is how we're going to run the uh, timeline. How are we going to play with the timeline process? Okay. And this, let's say this is the, the sample model. Okay. Okay. So this sample models, uh, I'm working in a very simple model so that we can run the process smoothly. Uh, for yours, it will be more complicated, I believe. And this is the sample of the work program created. Uh, okay, so it has the task name, it has the plan uh, start and plan end. You can bring along the actual start and actual end uh, date so that it can compare. Uh, it can it can show uh, it can show the comparison in the gun charts on the light, on the right side here. Okay, and then. Uh, most importantly, you will know that all the, the work program, that all the tasks that you created is actually attached with the uh, 3D modeling that you uploaded here. Okay, so how we define the 3D modeling here, let's say uh, we have the sets here. So if I click the selection sets here, uh, meaning that you are creating a sequence uh, to match the, the work program. So of course, uh, for uh, work program, it has their own sequence, uh, which, which way to start from the foundations to the superstructure uh, until the roof model and so on. So any kind of furnishing so comes later. So this is the, the way we uh, integrate the models with the work program. 
okay so and you can also bring more information if you need so if you uh, choose to add uh, more costing information from here you can also do that uh, and it, you have to enter it manually and if you have everything from the uh, work program software previously done in let's say microsoft excel microsoft project or primavera you can always link it back Okay, if by using this method, so you can always import the CSP, you can always import the Microsoft project, okay, uh, Primavera and so on. So uh, the way to import is, is not really hard, but you have to make sure the, the file is having uh, the right uh, tables uh, arrangement. Okay, sorry. So this is uh, some kind of uh, Constructions uh, work program created in CSV format in Excel. So you can always import back, okay? You can always open. So, and by opening, by uh, integrating the external data source, you can, you have to match okay, the external field name or the external columns name with the Navisworks columns name. So everything must be synchronized so that it will read uh, whatever data that came uh, from the external uh, source, okay? And that is where you can see the same uh, items here that has been generated. And we can also attach the 3D models, okay? And once you define the, the plan, let's say you have defined the plan start and end. So you can see uh, you, it can be any dates, okay? And if I want to see the simulation, how it works from the beginning of the project, which part starts first, you can uh, run the simulations here and do some sort of settings. Uh, if you want to, uh, you have to define the, overwrite the start dates uh, and the end dates uh, similar with the work program dates, the plan dates and plan end. And you can run the simulation by percentage or by weeks or by days, hours, minutes and seconds. It's entirely up to you, okay? And then you can show uh, animation. Later, I will show you how it works. So let's say you have done this setting and you will see this is the way we do simulations. Uh, we call it a five, uh, 40 simulations uh, because we have the timeline uh, created and we want to integrate with 3D model. So we call it as a 40 simulations. And the next stage will be 5D simulations. So what is actually 5D simulations? Uh, is actually the uh, way we integrate the costing information uh, along with the Navisworks model. Okay, so this is uh, all the process, okay, uh, simulation of all the process. And even better, if you, you know that Navisworks can do animations, uh, fly through, walk through, uh, aerial animations, okay, so what kind of animations uh, based on uh, sky drop animation, you can also do that, okay? And if you want to link those animations with this uh, work program, you can always uh, click at the option here. So whatever animation that you created, it always has the, uh, becomes uh, in the list. And if you click, if you selected the animation and click okay, you will see the difference between the previous simulation and the, the current simulation. So it comes with a better views so you can see a, all elevation views or all sides of the buildings, okay? And even if you do the animations better uh, with all views taken, so it will help you to understand and simulate how the, the building will be constructed. Okay, everybody, including the clients, consultants, uh, contractor, will have a same, uh, you know, same data and they will follow whatever created here uh, by the project manager. So you are no longer rely on 2D paper, which sometimes can be lost or can be, uh, cannot be, I, I don't say, I'm not saying it cannot be trusted, but sometimes the informations uh, cannot be, uh, you know, understand by many people in the projects. So by simulating uh, all these informations, you as the project manager, uh, actually one step ahead uh, from other people by in delivering uh, your, your work. Okay, so it's going to help you uh, on this. And also, if you are the consultants, also it's going to help you on that. Okay, And for clients, it helps clients to understand uh, the projects better. Okay, It's not just 
looking at the list in the work program and you know everything is in text uh, and numbers so many people will not be understanding if you are not in the background if you don't have the technical knowledge on the project so you you definitely cannot understand uh, the information stated in 2d and in 3d you can understand it better okay so uh, that's that are the two features uh, that that i plan to show you guys today uh, so flash detections and timeliner so both of them are the are quite useful and quite famous uh, features for people in the construction industry and hopefully you guys can uh, understand and if you guys are willing to if you guys want to watch this recording back in our facebook page we have the live uh, recorded live in our facebook page and also the youtube page okay so uh, Okay, so uh, I have finished my content, so let's jump to the Q&A. So if you have any questions, so let's speak out or you can always uh, type in the chat room. Okay, let me go through some of the questions. Okay, uh, questions. Uh, every time we reopen the Navis file, is the class detection will be updated automatically or we need to rerun the test, meaning part of the models really being changed from time to time. Okay, so as I showed to you earlier, okay, uh, Navis works uh, needs you to guide, to guide it to, you know, to guide the software to reread again the file, even though it's the same file. So you have to click at the refresh button okay and then uh you it depends you can rerun the test if you want to but uh, it's not necessary because once you refresh and if you, even if you don't want to to rerun you can still get the status back uh, rerun the test is just to make sure all the clash has actually been resolved okay so uh, rerun the test i know that sometimes it would take uh, uh, quite amount of time uh, it's going to be loading lots especially you, uh, if you are dealing with uh, IRS projects and so on. Okay, so uh, you have to go with the refresh first, and if you really want to the you really want to see the the end result, uh, you have to rerun the test. Okay. Could you explain on the next question? Is could you explain on the file mode typology uh, NWC NWF NWD? So which one do you recommend? So I recommend three of them so none of them is right or wrong because uh, this that totally depends on the purpose but uh, if you know well uh, how to how if you want to deliver the model so let's say if you have run the uh, simulation if you have run the class detections in navisworks and you want to share the models uh, you want to share the files to third party so i would suggest i would highly recommend you to use nwd because it will compress everything including it will uh, it will compress the, the links, uh, the software, means that once you have given the file into other third parties, so the original file, Revit file, the modeling file cannot be touched, cannot be touchable. Okay, so uh, that's the, the way if you want to deliver it to the party. But if you are sharing your process with the your own team or you know the project team, uh, that requires you to update the modeling file. So NWF is the best. Okay, because NWF is the one that you save uh, in from Navis work, it becomes NWF. Because meanwhile, NWC is the file that is automatically automatically generated uh, once you append uh, or once you once you bring in the file into Navis works. So NWC is actually the the cache file, the memory file. NWF is the file with all the Navis work uh, setting that you you created. Okay. And NWD is NWD is the the file that is being compressed to to one file to one single file, because if you want to share NWF files, you have to share along with the modeling file, with the right uh, path directory.
Okay, for for Zawa, and you, you you met the problems uh, saying that uh, once you rerun the clash detections. It's not really changes. Okay, refreshing the NWC bar is still same name and was fine for a few rounds. But lately, when I need to redo the clash after feedback from consultants, the refresh doesn't work. Although everything remains the same. So the, this question is is uh, is gonna be it's not common. Okay, but that totally uh, there are few workarounds that we can do. First, uh, if you really want to work with uh, if you store your file in the server, so that would be some kind of uh, issues that we need to look uh, up because uh, that totally depends on your network connection. If you are dealing with your server model, okay. If you store everything in your server, okay, and that's that's the issue that we always face because sometimes your PC are losing connection with your server. Meanwhile, uh, it, it's kind of on and off, okay. Uh, so I cannot guarantee it works well with server. But usually we we run Navis works. Uh, if you uh, you have to copy the files from server into the local file, okay. But if you wish to have uh, more workarounds, so I can help you uh, with that after this webinar session. So you can drop your email, so or and your contact number. So I will get into your issues further, so that I can help you out with that that uh, clash detection issues. Is it possible to use the timeliner? Okay, next question is possible. Is it possible to use timeliner function to create a video clip to show the progress of the m &E installations? Yes, it is. So, uh, but that model, uh, as you all aware that uh, if you are willing, if you are uh, asking to do, if you've been asked to do the m &E animations uh, installation part, so which one comes first, the hanger, the clip, uh, or the components, the ducting, piping, and so on. So if you wish to do that kind of animations, uh, please make sure your model is, uh, especially in Revit, uh, the family must be created uh, separately. Uh, uh, and you have to make sure you understand how to create a manual uh, selection sets. Okay. So if you understand how to create a selection set, you can simply create any kind of animations uh, based on the timeline that we created. Okay. Because timeline, I know that timeline was was created for uh, the work program, but some people are doing timeline are using timeline to to create animations. Uh, we call it as uh, construction animations. So it means that it's not really following the the, the timeline, the the time uh, plan time or the actual time, but it's just to show to people how it's been constructed. Okay, I understand that question because. There are um, few people uh, in my context that know it very well. Okay, so you have given the context to Emma. I will contact you further on this, so you don't have to worry. Okay, so is there any more questions from the audience today? We have total numbers of uh, 34 participants, which is very good. Okay, uh, okay. next question, every time changes on Revit model. So do we need to export to NWC or it will automatically save the changes on NWC file? What you need to do once you do changes in Revit model, you just need to save and close Revit file. So that's the thing that you need to do. And next thing, uh, without touching anything, you go to the Navisworks uh, file and refresh the software. So it will read the changes. Okay, so. So if you wish to know uh, to, to uh, Okay, I've got the questions here. In the event of both Revit files upon appending do not merge properly, what can be done? Okay, so this is the issues that usually uh, happen because of the coordination point issues. Okay, some people or uh, some, uh, I can say that uh, the project is not well coordinated because even though it is a 10 meter, it is quite huge actually. I thought it's 10 mm. So 10 meters is 
exactly the issues where you have using you have been using a different uh, positioning method uh, from other from the main uh, construction model. So there is a way to move the models. Okay, uh, if I can show you, let me show you some samples. So navy swap model, even though it is uh, meant to be coordinated, okay, doesn't mean that it cannot be moved. So if you ever click the uh, navy swap models like this, okay, once you click the models, you have the item tools uh, activated. So it means that you can move, rotate, scale, and reset. Okay, and if you are having the positions coordinations, you can enter it here. Okay. And uh, it has to follow the, the gizmo or the axis for x direction, y direction, and z direction. So uh, you should know very well how you can, uh, you know that you can know, you can measure the distance between this point to the other point so that you can enter the distance. Okay, for instance, you know that the distance between this, so let me measure. So this is the value that you need to be inserted. Okay, okay. There also there is a shortcut lah. So if you are interested to know more about NaviSwap, so you can always come up to our training. So I can show you more shortcuts in working with NaviSwap. Okay. So this is the way we can move it back into the right positions to so that it can well coordinated with other models. Is there any more questions? Okay. So I believe that is all for now. But before we end our sessions, uh, can you guys please do the thumbs up? Okay, if you are if you join this session uh, via computer, you will have the reaction button down there. Okay, and if you have the uh, if you are using phone uh, joining this webinar, you can always click at the more button and you can. Uh, even give thumbs up or raise your hand, uh, it's both words the same, okay? So, so I will count to three. So I need you guys to, I uh, need your cooperation. So give me thumbs up for that. We can organize more webinars so that if you think this is very helpful uh, to your knowledge, so you can give us our thumbs up in three, two, and one. Okay, that's very cool. So uh, many people like it, and hopefully we can uh, see you guys around in the next topic. Uh, so you can always come back to uh, our website to see the next events uh, organized uh, by our team members. Okay, so before we and our session, if you have any other issues that uh, related to any of the software, you can always go to our websites and find the uh, CAT system new help desk. So by raising these issues in our help desk, we, uh, our team, our technical team and sales team are willing to help you. Okay, what you need to do is just continue as guests. Okay, and fill in all the required information. Okay, you can fill in the topics, what kind of error that you, that you face. Okay, don't forget to put your email and company name and for the description. If you have uh, any attachment, you can always attach the file here. And our our technical team will get back to you the uh, immediately. Okay, upon the uh, will respond to you immediately and uh, working around with the solutions uh, so until you you get the solutions right. Okay, so thank you for joining this webinar. Hope to see you guys again in our next sessions. All right, so thank you very much. See you again, bye.
Hadir sama Kak Ernest. Tanya lah dia. Oh. 